So I've been buying a lot more robot vacuums recently, mainly because I'm excited about our new robot vacuum testing facility. The one I'll be testing today, the Vava Motion Autopilot 2nd Generation, is probably one of the cheapest robot vacuums I've ever bought, and you might be able to tell from the title of this video that it kind of showed in the tests. So links in the description to the Vava, as well as some links to cheaper robot vacuums that we actually did like as well. So before I start sort of bashing this robot, I should give credit where credit is due and discuss some of the positive stuff first. So we measured its airflow with an anemometer and found that it had 10 CFM on high power and 8 CFM on low power, which is a little on the low side for robots in this price range, but still more than the Roomba 690, which has really low airflow. Its pickup was as good or better than the Roomba or Eufy, at least when talking about picking up debris on the surface of hard floors and carpets. It had no trouble with fine debris up to extra large debris on hard floors and carpets. It did leave a little more fine debris on its low power setting than it did on its high power setting, which is typical, so max power would be my recommendation for hard floors and carpet pickup. It also has pretty good battery life at two hours on low power and a larger than average dustbin. I guess I should mention that its carpet deep clean test results were pretty good for its price range too. Better than the best-selling DBOT N79S, but not quite as good as the Eufy 11S, which is our current favorite robot vacuum in this price range. So that's the positive stuff. It picks up debris from the surface of floors as good or better than many robots in its price range. It has good battery life, a decent dustbin capacity, and middle-of-the-road carpet deep cleaning ability. So where to start with the negative stuff? Continuing with the pickup test, I guess, we tested for pet hair and longer human hair, but the test couldn't be done accurately because the Vava has a really bad exhaust placement, which blows lighter debris around everywhere. Don't get me wrong, a lot of robot vacuums do this to one degree or another, but this was particularly bad. It did have some light tangles in the brush after the test, but again, I couldn't test this accurately, so take that with a grain of salt. The main negative stuff, though, and the reason I titled this video the way I did, was with regard to its navigation and obstacle avoidance results. So the Vava claims to be a smart navigation vacuum that can clean in straight, efficient lines instead of the more or less random pattern that most robots in this price range have. Higher-end robot vacuums use either cameras or lasers to develop a map to help them navigate in a similar systematic way, but there's also a growing number of robot vacuums that can achieve similar results as the camera and laser bots by using a gyroscope and an advanced algorithm. The upside is that it's a lot cheaper if you can get a smart navigation result without cameras or lasers, and some robot vacuum companies do this really well, like the Roborock E25 or the E35, which we'll be reviewing next week, but other companies like this Fava haven't really mastered the technique. So we ran the Vava multiple times and in multiple scenarios, and while it may have started out using straight lines to clean, as soon as it hit an obstacle that it didn't quite understand, it basically devolved into some of the worst coverage I've seen in a while. I mean, if there were no obstacles whatsoever, it could mimic a smart vacuum fairly well, but in the real world, it was quite a bit less effective than even a random navigation robot. For example, here's what the Vava did after a 30-minute test. Now, compare that to a similarly priced random navigation bot after 30 minutes, or a Roomba 600 series after 30 minutes. I gave the Vava a lot of opportunities to prove itself. Most of the time it would stop after about 10 or 15 minutes, declare itself to be, quote, finished cleaning, and return to the dock. It did get stuck once in the tassels of the rug and once it got stuck under the couch. In general, though, this was the first time I tested a smart vacuum that would have been a lot better if they just programmed it to be random. I could go into some other details about its performance on these tests or its features, which are accessed only through the remote control, like spot mode or edge cleaning, but I think you get the picture. I'm not not going to be recommending this robot vacuum. That being said, I know this particular bot seems to be private labeled under different names on Amazon and is selling for crazy cheap, so maybe it would be worth it to you in your situation. In any case, I'll link the Vava in the description as well as our review of the Eufy 11S and our big robot vacuum competition video in which the Eufy won for the budget category. Consider a like or even better, a subscription to Vacuum Wars to keep up with all the latest robot vacuums, regular vacuums, and carpet cleaners. Thanks for watching.